é o Escavaim. Today we have Ingvild Smith, Deputy Minister of Norway, Mines and Energy Ministry, and Renata Isfer from uh, Ministry of Mines and Energy, and she is a legal advisor at the ministry. Welcome, good morning, ladies. Good morning, Hi, good morning. So, uh, we heard that Norway applies 40% of the male uh, representation law in the government work. Could you please tell us a little bit more about this uh, law? Well, it is important to have both gender represented in different wards. In, not only in Norway, I think all of the world. Why? Yes, worldwide. Because I think that we are equal, men and women are equal, equal but we are different. And the differences is good to have uh, different points of views and to solve the challenges and to meet the, take the possibilities that is in the present but also in the future. I think we need uh, to have different approaches to, to, to take best decisions. So women represent something else than men. So that's why we I think it's a, it's a good idea to have both yes. gender, both sides to be heard. Well, same point, different visions. Exactly, same point. yes, yeah. uh, exactly. Yes. So it, it's served us well. Uh, we do have some well issues within the oil and gas sector though, yep. even though we ha have one of the highest rates with participations from females in the workforce in Norway, in, in every family, almost everybody, both the man and the woman, ha have a job. Uh, but when we come to a certain level in the management positions within the oil and gas industry, the lack of women are quite huge, actually. But tell me, is a law or is a it, best practice? No, it, it, it's a law for government-owned, state-owned companies. It has to be a representation for 40% of one of the gen genders. So that means almost 50-50, though. But it's a, it's a good start. The first step. It's a, it's a very good first step, and within the oil, uh, uh, not only the oil and gas, but within the politics, it's 50-50. We have a, a female prime minister, we have a female finance minister, and we have a female foreign affairs minister. And in the board of the companies, you have the same person. Yes, yes, they do. That's good. Uh, Amanda, please, in Brazil we have the same rules or laws what we have in Brazil today. No, we don't. There is a good proposal at Congress, uh, but it, it was not approved. It's still there, it's still under discussion. There is a lot of resistance against it because uh, we call it quotas, and the quotas are like uh, up top of the season when it's out of order. And yes, it is very important. The thing is, uh, inside the government, it would, it would not even meet the quotas by law. The new president to just come and say, okay, so from now on, I'll have forty percent of women in the main leading, in the main leading process, in the main, the main leading positions, and it could be something that comes from the person who gets elected. And we'll see. Well, we, but right now there is nothing. There's no. just like uh, only intentions. Yeah, only good, some things. Good intentions. Very yeah, very good. Very good. Very very good. Very good. I believe. Thank you, Bobby. Best press worldwide, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah, the discussions are starting. We, you can see everybody talking about it, and especially in the oil and gas and energy industry. Right now, this is a big subject because, as you told, that, that's one of the most gender balanced uh, industries. industries. It is, yeah. it is. And it's quite strange that because we know that several of the reports and analysis of the gender representation in the management is positive. It's higher uh, innovativeness, it's higher revenues. performance, revenues. So the economy side of it is positive, just positive. So, and something we know that the oil and gas industry react very positive on is economy. Yes. So, so it, why not? Yeah. So why not? Economy is driven, yeah. It's a, it is. It's, it's quite interesting now. Yeah, the thing is, I, I, I went to Harvard a few, uh, few months back, and one of the things that they taught us is that. When you always see a man in that position, you think that the characteristics of that man are the characteristics that are important to the position. Yes. But it's only because every time you see a man, you think you need to be strong, you think you need to be yes. aggressive, yes. you know, male characteristics. But, you know, like, 
teamwork and being able to engage your team and being more innovative and being creative. There are so many qualities to women leaders that could also uh, benefit, be a benefit for everyone. Yes. And, and, and politicians should not should not forget that half of the population yeah, is women, right. and that's exactly as many people that are vultures. Yes. So half of the politicians that need the votes <laughs> comes from women. Yes. <laughs> so if they miss out on half of the population, well, they miss out on half of the vultures. But that's a good question, Ingrid and Renata. Uh, it's, it's a kind of a preference of women do not work in engineering areas or is a kind of a non -opportun lack of opportunity for them. Yes. What's the real case? I started out uh, in the oil and gas business 27 years ago. I am 35 now. <laughs> <laughs> I started out as a child. Uh, and as, as a climber, a, 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 a rope access climber. Uh, and I was uh, doing maintenance offshore and I was doing analysis uh, offshore. And nobody thought that a woman could do that. Then we can do whatever we want to do. But we have to visualize that women in different positions are normal people. I'm the deputy minister in Norway. I'm normal. I have children. I have a husband. I have an older mother. So we do. We're quite normal. So everybody, every girl in Brazil and worldwide can be whatever she wants to be. But she has to see other role models to to have the idea yes. that I can be whatever I want. Yeah, yeah, I believe so too. Uh, you know, actually, it's interesting because my grandmother was an engineer. Wow! Yes. So Four years ago. Yeah, she oh, is like right. many years ago, and but she had teacher who said to her, "This is not a place for a woman. I'm not going to teach you." She had a hard time, but she broke everything, and she's retired today. But but still, when I saw the role model, I thought, "Hey, I can go there too." Exactly. And if you don't have that, and there are very few. Sometimes it gets a little cultural. Women sometimes don't think about these options because they don't see anyone there that could be their role model. So you need more women, and the more women you have in those in those careers as engineers, the more little girls who think, "Oh, I want to be an engineer too," and that's how exactly. And we need you know, men and husbands to understand that the responsibility for our parents oh, yes. and for our children <laughs> yeah. are just as we the same. Yeah. have to share that responsibility and that's where some politicians can also uh, support, play and support they, that exactly. in terms of uh, let's see the child uh, license when, when born how long you have for men and women it's different in brazil is different totally different i suppose in Norway is the same as it's different we have we have one third and one third is divided between the daddy and the mommy and one third is for grab so they can choose so it's an obligation. It's an obligation. If you don't, you have uh, the paternity leave. You, you get money, money from the state, and if you don't take it, you don't get it. So we have to take it actually, because we also see that uh, having uh, time with your children, as when they're growing up, is very important to the child, but also to the parents and the dad. <laughs> exactly. Renata, tell me, uh, we heard that we have a project listing women for uh, be nominated in the next government uh, in January next year. Is it a public list or uh, how many people are there in this list? Yeah, well, it's been, it's a, in a process. We are collecting uh, many names. The idea is that, like, usually when, when you talk about women in oil and gas and energy, they say there's no women, that's why there's no... Because when you yes. look at the ministry, there's no secretaries, the minister is a man in the, the agencies. Now there's a, one nomination that is historically all male, all male all the time. And they say there's no women. And there's a lot of women. And yes, that's what we could prove. So <laughs> we launched it on LinkedIn to start. It got actually got the repercussions are really good and we are really excited about it. So many people from the sector sent, sent us names. And now we are doing kind of a peer review because we have to select among those names those who have the profile the, the, to be minister and those who could be in other main leading roles. Because all the women we got, they are really good and they could go to a leading but not necessarily minister. So we are listening to the IVP, to, to many to many places to do that. And we, will, we hope to launch the names this week 
and to give it to the candidates for president as soon as we know after the first the first uh, part of the election when we have to. It's so. Can I just add because it's so interesting because we hear that in Orbis as well. There were no qualified women for the position. <laughs> oh, no. First, it, it is of course. It, there's a yeah. lot of qualified women, but who sets the criteria for, for the qualification for the different management positions? That's men. Yes. And when men sets the criteria, they, set, they like, tend to, to choose men. Men like to choose men, men that are have the same background as they have. So, so and in the management positions, who says what kind of uh, competence and knowledge and skills you need for the future decision makers? And we should we should absolutely be on board. And as you said, we need younger women in the companies and in the politics, uh, in the pipeline to go on board and be a part of the possibility management uh, the decision makers in in the future. Preparing them, Prepare them. being in this yes. position. Yes. And changing the mindset, and mindset of the male management. Yeah. And the thing is, now with this list, nobody can say there's no women. Uh, exactly. exactly. There is. Like everyone, like the important people that know the sector is telling us, oh, those women are good and they, yes. they, they are ready to go there. And how can someone say there's no women? They cannot, maybe they will not choose women, but they will never say that it's because there's no women. They will have to, you know, sure. <laughs> yeah, take yeah, care. Yeah. <laughs> Good introduction. I know that today afternoon you have a panel about this. Yes, yeah, yeah. quite a must for. Oh, that's great. Okay. Come. <laughs> men, come and participate. Men should come and participate and, and see yeah. and, and well, listen. Listen. Yes. <laughs> okay. We appreciate having Ingvill and Renata in this nice party. Thank you very much for this chance to talk with you all. Thank you for having us. Thank you very, <laughs> thank you very much. It was a pleasure, and thank you for supporting this because it's really important for everyone. Absolutely, it is. Thank you. Obrigada. Campanha Bloco Café nos Brasil Energia é a Thank you.